Now that you've learned how to land without any help of the autopilot, I'm going to teach you the exact opposite, performing a fully automated landing. Quite some time ago, I uploaded a video about my amazement that the Flightgear 777-200ER could perform a fully automated ILS guided landing. I didn't really get into how it's done though, so some of you started wondering how to do it yourself. Well, actually it might be easier than you think, if you are already familiar with ILS landings. And I think I have made just a few videos about that. Fully automatic landings are used in real life, whenever the weather is so bad that the pilot cannot see the runway on approach. So right now I'm looking up the ILS info, nothing really special, runway heading, ILS frequency, etc. I'm now going to descend to 2000 feet above ground level, using the map to meet the ILS localizer any second now. So I click the approach button on the autopilot to arm both the horizontal and the vertical localizer. And now I have to do something that you might not have always done for ILS landings. You might have had this problem where you touch down perfectly and then you look at the altimeter and it shows a pretty weird value. Thanks to the comment below my previous Autoland video, I now know that that is because I never checked if my altitude instruments were set on the right values. In difficult terms, I have never filled in the right Q and H value into my altimeter. As you may know, aircraft can determine their altitude by measuring the air pressure. The Q and H value will tell the aircraft what the air pressure level is at ground level. Based on that information, the aircraft can tell pretty accurately what its altitude is relative to the airport's elevation. The most realistic way to get an airport's current air pressure level is to listen to the airport's ATIS. This stands for Automatic Terminal Information Service. The ATIS is basically a radio station which is continuously broadcasting live weather and runway information at relatively big airports. So you'll hear some weather information and runway usage info, One, but just wait seven, until you hear this. Altimeter. Two, nine, seven, seven. That is the air pressure measured at the airport in inches of mercury. Open the instrument settings here and type in the numbers. Don't forget that the last two numbers are decimals, so place a dot right in the middle of the four digits. Now your instruments should be set and the aircraft knows its correct altitude. But if an airport doesn't have an ATIS frequency or you just want to use an easier way to get the Q&H value, go up to Environment, Weather and use the Q&H value you see there. In the 777 you are now good to go. I highly recommend you to take manual control over the engines though, because I found that if you let the autopilot control those for you, it tends to make sudden adjustments if you want the plane to slow down, and those adjustments can kick the aircraft off the glide slope. So manually slow your plane down, to just above touchdown speed, and apply the flaps accordingly. Also don't forget to lower the landing gear. Now all you basically have to look at is your primary flight display. Check your speed, double check the Q and H, and watch how well the autopilot manages to stay on the glide slope path. As soon as you see something that says land appear on the display, you can be sure that the plane will guide itself all the way down. Rollout and flare confirm that the plane is able to perform a flare before touchdown and that it's then able to stay on the runway centerline. I found that landing on an ILS Category 1 equipped runway can be harder for the plane than landing with ILS Category 2 or Category 3. Category 2 and 3 resulted in much smoother landings for the most part, but it still heavily depends on the weather conditions. After touchdown, use the engine's reversers, if necessary, and wait for the autopilot to disconnect automatically. As soon as you apply enough taxi power on the engines, the auto brakes will stop and the speed brakes will come down again. The 777-200ER is not the only plane of flight gear that can auto land. For example, this A330-200, which is fairly new in flight gear, can do the same thing. I'm going to show you how to perform an automatic landing in this Airbus as well, because it's important to know the differences between Boeing and Airbus planes when it comes to automatic landings. 
Getting the Airbus's autopilot to follow the glide slope is pretty much the same as it is on the Boeing. The autopilot is set on the localizer and approach mode. But as you will notice, there are two autopilot switches, AP1 and AP2. If I've done my research correct, that is a few minutes of googling, autopilot 1 is generally used when the captain has the main control over the aircraft and autopilot 2 is used when the first officer is in control. Both autopilots can perform the same task like following the glide slope path, but for an automatic landing, both autopilots have to be enabled. And then again, if something like land shows up on the primary flight display, you should be fine. And also, I would recommend taking manual control over the engines. Apply flaps, gear and ultra brakes accordingly, and wait for the plane to touch down. Oh and don't forget to set the engines to idle when the plane says retard. At the moment after touchdown, you will have to steer the Airbus manually. But I believe in real life, this is done automatically as well. To stop the auto brakes, just press B. And that's it. I hope you'll enjoy auto landing your planes and of course, feel free to post your videos as video responses to this video. I hope to see you back here next time for the next episode of Flight Gear How To.